Hello, Reformers, and welcome back to A Clash of Kings. Now, when we left off, we had just been declared war upon by the Vale themselves. I was not expecting it, as I'm sure many of you weren't either, but goodness me, we were able to retaliate against their declaration by taking Gull Town without too many issues. We did suffer a couple of casualties in terms of heavy knights and regular knights and so forth, but thankfully enough, we have maintained our foothold in their territory and as you see here I'm just going across their territory just to make sure where I'm going to go next but as I do this it dawns on me that perhaps the Vale are a little bit too large for us to be able to take them on too easily but as you see here we do have someone that is attempting to attack us now what I would like to do is if at some point we are able to defeat enough vassals, we might be able to hopefully rescue some prisoners from the Vale vassals and then place those prisoners into the garrison here and hopefully they'll be able to protect Gull Town from any interlopers. But then, of course, we do have to worry about the fact that we have such a far distance to go. I mean, look at this. We have to travel across the entire map. Well, it's not actually not too bad because we are going from east to west, I think. Yes, east to west. And that's not too bad. I would say that that's pretty good. But, of course, we do have to travel by Dragonstone lands and then head through here. Hmm. That is a little bit worrying, but yes, in the last episode, the Westerlands has now reformed. And I'm pretty sure that they are going to be taking something, but who knows what, just at the moment. So, hmm, we will see. Oh. Okay, we will see. Yes, I thought that color was a little bit different from House Targaryen. So yes, the Westerlands has returned, and they have taken Grassy Vale. Well, that's rather ironic. We're fighting the Vale, and that's Grassy Vale. <laughs> okay, well... Without further ado, we are just going to be taking a look at our units here, making sure everyone is okay. We're going to be heading into the garrison. Now, the reason why I have decided to, well, I suppose start recording here, is I think it might be rather interesting to see how we defend Gull Town from the likes of... Oh yes, one of you did tell me in the comments that Storm's End was under siege, but unfortunately enough, we are now at Gull Town, so... Ah... Yes, one of you did actually mention to me that, yes, Reformist, it would be a better idea to potentially attack and eliminate the Stormlands before you focus on the Vale. But unfortunately, that was an episode a little bit too late for me to see that. So, yeah, I think we probably have some difficulties on our hands here. However... It does seem that the Stormlands is still at war against House Targaryen, because as you may have seen there, one of the Stormlands vassals was just taken prisoner by House Targaryen themselves. So I'm hoping that we won't actually have too many difficulties with the Stormlands, or at the very least, I would hope that our vassals down there in Stormland territory that we just recently conquered will be able to sufficiently defend against them. So, let us join the battle. We have 364 against the enemy's 196. So let us head on. And we will see... Oh yes, this is that interesting layout, isn't it? I love this layout. It's very, very good. Okay. Now, I have a pretty good feeling about this because we do have Garrett. We have Drollo alongside us as well. Oh my goodness, they've gotten both kills right here. First two kills of the siege. First three kills indeed. Goodness me. Oh my... Okay, so apparently Garrett is an absolute beast. Wow. I hope he levels up soon. I'd like to be able to increase his skills a little bit further. I have... I do believe information that actually regards to him. And that is, of course, that he is rather close in getting... The next points in Power Draw. And that will make his ranged attacks even better. Which will be absolutely amazing. I do apologize for me standing here for just a second. I need to reduce the volume on my headphones. My apologies. But yes, let us now just deal as much damage as we can by doing jump and slash. Yes, this appears to be the only way we'll be able to get to the front lines without putting ourselves in too much jeopardy. And we have done some pretty considerable damage so far as well. Now, 
I am a little skeptical about the fact that these guys are even going to get in here. I don't think they will. Because if you recall, when we were doing this in the previous episode, we did have some difficulties, and we had a huge amount of units. Of course, the enemy's garrison was rather large at that point, and I suppose we could say that they really did have a better defense than we do, but in the grand scheme of things, we have Elias, don't we? We have King Elias, and Garrett, and Drollo, and many other companions, actually. And that reminds me, we probably need to find some more companions as time goes on. So let's hopefully be able to capture another town in this episode. Well, not too sure about that just yet because, as you know, our garrison here is pretty weak. And I think what we'd like to do instead is probably just head out into Goldtown's tavern itself after we have completed this siege defense, if we are able to complete it rather swiftly. And then, hopefully, we'll be able to find a companion there if possible, but... If not, then so be it. We do have a lot of them after all, so I don't think we really need too many, but I suppose it's always nice to have some companions because they do level up into some mighty good units. And I'm just not sure what kind of unit we would be able to level up anyway because at the moment we have... what do we have? We have a forager, we have a medic, we also have... do we have a looter? I think we have a... oh my goodness! Whoa! That will teach me to be nonchalant. <laughs> 41 damage. Ouch. I think that's probably the most damage I have taken on Elias in quite some time. So props to the veteran Vale Longbowman. That is for sure. Props to them. Goodness me. So yes, here we have Carver as well. He is just a straight up warrior archetype, I suppose. And do we have a looter? I'm not entirely sure whether we have a looter. Maybe we'll need to level up some looting on someone. But of course, we really don't raid villages that often with King Elias, so not sure if looting is entirely useful at this time, but maybe it will be if we do a lot of battles with the Vale vassals at some point. Well, they will probably be coming towards us right now, so maybe it will be useful. And wow, I think we've actually seen almost all of our companions getting killed here, so I am very pleased to see that. Now I just need to make sure that I am doing consistent damage. Come on, yeah, there we go, very nice. And yeah, ah, oh yes, he was parrying that attack, unfortunate. Now I'm just trying to stay in the line of sight of these melee units, but not in the line of sight of the enemy's archers, because as many of you have stated in the comments, the archers of the Vale are very, very powerful, and yes, we do need to make sure that we avoid their attention, I suppose we could say. Hmm, perhaps. Oh my. Okay, whoa, they appear to be coming up here? Oh wow, okay, they are rather confident then, or maybe they've run out of ammunition. That would be wonderful. If they've run out of ammunition, then I think we are in a very good position here. Yeah, there we go. Nice thrusting attack against that heavy Veil Knight. That is my only goal, basically, in this entire siege, is just to take out the high-level units, because if we don't do that, then they're going to be absolutely destroying our lines right here, and we need to keep this line intact. As far as I I'm aware, at least, I would really like to be able to keep it in line, because then we can very easily defend against their attacks. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. Oh, be careful. Be careful, Elias. We don't want to get jetpacked off the edge, do we? No. Well, maybe we do. That would be rather amusing, but we will probably die as a result, so perhaps not. But I suppose the best thing we can do is just continue our attacks on these units that are heading in here. Do bear in mind that I am using a two-handed and it is rather difficult to swing in this tight close quarters action here. But we are accomplishing that feat rather easily here, which is quite nice because they are sending in elite Veil Man-at-Arms. Okay. Interesting. So we have possibly defeated all of their elite knights. That would be nice. If we haven't, then I suppose that's probably not very good. We haven't been doing our job properly, but yes, it seems as though maybe we have destroyed our way through their reinforcements and hopefully that will be the case yeah that would be rather nice so let's see oh there's actually someone right here oh well he's taken down now but nevertheless he was through and that is something rather worrying to say the least that someone actually got through here now look at this guy you see this guy here 
He's just a head. He's just a head on the battlements. That is rather impressive. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Goodness me, that is actually rather creepy, to say the least. But yes, it is actually just a body on the other side, and he's just got impaled in the wall. But nevertheless, it does look like a disembodied head. So, <laughs> rather impressive, to say the least. Okay, so there we have it. Rather easy defense right there. Ten renown, two morale. We did lose eight units out of 18, which is a pretty bad ratio, to say the least. We lost five elite longbowmen. I suppose that is thanks to the Vale Longbowmen retaliating against us right there. And Drollo and Garrett did a very good job. They were very even in their kills as well. King Elias was able to get 43, Brendan 2, and Alan, who hasn't actually gotten too many kills in the past, has won. And there we have it. Very nice indeed. He did manage to escape, which is unfortunate. I would have liked to have taken him prisoner, of course, but no such luck this time around. We will let our companions loot everything. And now we are going to be leveling up. Now, Alan has actually gained a level. I'm not entirely sure what Alan does. So yes, let's take a look at our skills here. I think Martin is a little bit wounded, so we won't be able to see his foraging skill at the moment. But we have engineering. Pathfinding, Tactics on King Elias, of course. Then, of course, we have Surgery and Wound Treatment on Brynden. Jonas has First Aid. And Alan has Spotting and Tracking. Aha! So maybe we want to level that up on him, even though those skills could be considered semi-useless. I do think Spotting is actually a pretty nice skill, because at night, you want to be able to see your opponent sneaking up on you, don't you? Otherwise... Things are going to get messy, so <laughs> maybe we want to go for that. I do believe tracking is a little bit more useless than spotting, but I think if you are good at interpreting the tracks, then I would say it is a very important skill, but I am one of those people that are not. So, what are we going to be doing here? We could level up our agility or our intelligence. I think our intelligence might be the way to go, because then we can get some more spotting. And we can get some more Power Strike as well, so why not? We may as well do that. And next time around, we'll probably level up his agility a little bit so that we can get him some points in shield, maybe? I mean, I think the only reason that Alan would probably get taken out is if his shield was destroyed. So maybe it would be a good idea to reinforce that ability a little more. Now, what is he actually using? Oh my goodness, is he really using that shield? Oh wow. Okay. I think we might want to get him some better gear, as you can see here. Alan Cargill's Gambason Surcoat. Interesting. I think we might want to get him something a little better than that. But as it stands at the moment, he's not getting too many kills. So maybe we should invest in him? Maybe. Well, this is probably the best he's going to get for some time. Oh my goodness, I'm not going to spend that much. But I would like to get him something better. So this is 4,000. We do have a rather considerable amount of money at the moment. So I think that will be fine. We'll spend 4,000 on him. And then can we get him a shield? We could get him a heavy kite shield. And that is it. Well, heavy kite shield it is then. Oh, I was hoping for a little bit of a better shield. Maybe a little bit larger? Because... As it stands, this shield is not going to give him the greatest amounts of protection, but I think it will be rather cool because it does put our crest on it as well. We do have a kite shield as well, but it's a reinforced one, so I was really hoping for the reinforced, but nevertheless, there it is. Now, do we have... Ah, we do actually have a better sword for him too, so let's give him the Masterwork Arming Sword. Why not? We may as well. And everything else is reasonably good. So we can leave him with that. Very nice indeed. Now we are Marshal, I do believe. So if we speak to Brynden here. And what we could do is... Oh, I want to end the campaign? Apparently no one came to join us. Okay. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. I was hoping that some people would come over from Dragonstone lands and maybe attempt to help us out a little bit. But nevertheless, we will just be waiting here for some time. We will be rejuvenating ourselves. As you see here, Lord Philip Fell of the Stormlands has been taken prisoner by House Reformia. So one of our vassals is doing a good job, I'm very glad to say. Oh my, I was a little bit worried that our vassals would just sit idly by while 
the Stormlands took everything. Well, they did actually take Storm's End without any opposition whatsoever, as far as I am aware at least. But nevertheless, we have sufficiently defended Gold Town at the moment. We are now at war against someone else. Someone is attempting a siege, and ooh. We might be in trouble with our wages here, as you can see. 704 is our profit. That's not that much. What are we losing most from? Well, our wages is definitely something to worry about. And obviously the tax inefficiency is terrible too, but yes, we're losing rents from all of these villages here, and that is it. So I think that is probably the reason why. Hmm, that is unfortunate. We probably need to do battle against that mer vassal that is running around our territory sooner rather than later if possible, but first off we would like to defend against this vassal here. And then we will see what happens. Oh my, really? Oh my goodness. Okay, so as you may have seen just there, Fellwood has now come under siege by you know who? The Westerlands. Yes, that is really unfortunate, and I would love to have a faction relation report at the moment, and I'm not entirely sure whether we can find that. Because as you see here, we just have four size, force morale, companions, and companion missions, and then we just have character reports, courtship relations, and weekly budget, and that's it. Hmm. Well, I suppose we can go to factions here, and we can select the Westerlands. They are at war against House Reformia still. Oh, that's unfortunate. I was hoping that because they had been eliminated, it would cause us no problems. But apparently, <laughs> they continue to have problems with us. Now, oh, they actually have a lot of units as well. Hmm. We might want to head over to their area and see whether they want to make peace. Because they do only have one fief, and we could potentially do quite a lot of damage to them. So, maybe it would be in their best interest to make peace with us, but who knows. For now, what I'm going to want to do is... I wish to make peace! No, it's never going to happen. We need to speak to Lord Nestor, of course. Hmm. Well, nevertheless, we are going to be heading in versus this fellow, because he is attempting to take Gull Town, and I would like to head on to the nearby fief and potentially conquer that as well before the leader of the vassal shows his face because then we might have a very good chance of making peace and if we are able to make peace then we'll be in an even stronger position to fight against the stormlands and maybe even the westerlands as well even though i would like to leave the westerlands alone if they are going to take harren hall which would enable us to of course do the quest that we were not able to do previously so Let's head all of our units down here. We're hopefully going to be getting over to that mountain. I think that would be a rather nice idea. After all, all of our elite longbowmen are incredible, and we do need to get them into the most efficient spot possible, in my opinion. So let's see what we can do here. We're going to be getting everyone here, apart from our archers, which we will place on the side of this hill. I think that's going to be the best possible position. Although, they don't really carry that many arrows as far as I am aware, so it might cause them to waste more ammunition than I would like. But yes, these fellows really do not have very many units, and we actually have 80 cavalry. We could just charge in here straight off. Goodness me, why am I using tactics? Hmm, well, I suppose it's good practice just to immediately think of doing some tactical maneuvers rather than just charging straight on in there. So... Yeah, maybe that's always a good idea, but nevertheless, I will be just charging our cavalry in here, and our infantry will just fight with them while they're holding position a little bit. We're going to be using our pole arm a little bit here. <laughs> oh my goodness, 96? Wow, okay, I was not expecting 96 damage, but yes, apparently even uncouched lances do a lot of damage, and oh my goodness, are you really pursuing us? Okay, that's probably a bad idea, as you can probably see. Oh my goodness, wow. Okay, I did forget, actually, that they've made spears much better in Clash of Kings in comparison to other mods, because as far as I'm aware, other mods do have spear speed to worry about, because spear speed in other mods is rather slow, but in Clash of Kings it does appear to be a lot faster and more usable, I would say, which is pretty cool. 
Now, let's see. We have scattered them entirely, and as you may have seen by the kill log a little bit earlier, Alan was able to acquire, I think, three kills? Was it three kills or two kills? Well, whatever the case, he is now gaining a couple more kills. That's very nice to see. And I'm just hoping that that is due to the fact that we upgraded his equipment. Unfortunately, it might not be, but whatever the case, I think we did right by him. And, yeah, we didn't really lose too many. He took out two. Yeah, not bad. Elias was only able to kill three, so I suppose that's always a good thing. So, are we going to take this guy prisoner? He does have 100 relation with us. I think we'll take him prisoner. And... Wow. Is this guy... Okay, so, apparently... <laughs> oh! Oh, did you see that? I think you saw that, didn't you? Oh, I am face palming. I am face palming right now. That is not good. If you saw that, then you know what I'm talking about, but oh my goodness, I think you'll see in just a moment what is going to be happening, and I am just going to be so incredibly disappointed. But, saying that, I don't think it's really that bad, because the faction in question that we may have aggravated a little bit is not exactly the strongest faction, but they do have a lot of vassals, so... Yeah, this is not going to turn out too good, is it? No! <laughs> Definitely not. No, as you see here, the Three Sisters has now declared war against House Reformia because we took that guy prisoner. That was a bad decision on my part, I think. Hmm, well... In any case... <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what to do now. Okay. Well, we have a strong resolve. Our iron will will prevail. And I'm unsure what to do. Shall we head over here and get Fenner some more fiefs? Or shall we just expand our territory around here? That might be a good idea, actually. Because Kool and our various other vassals... Ah, I can't remember the other fellow. Clavis, that's it. Sir Clavis. He is all the way over here, I do believe. He's along this coastline, and that's basically all he's doing. He's just patrolling around here, not doing too much, and if he's patrolling around here, why is he not defending our villages? But yes, hopefully he is patrolling around there. And I think if we were to give him Iron Oaks or Runestone or something like that, he might decide to arrive here, and then we will be able to spread all over the territory of the Vale. That would be the best thing ever. So, first off, level up, and then we're going to head to Runestone. Let's do it. Number of prisoners? Yeah, okay. Yes, we had too many prisoners, of course, because we had a lord. And let us head in. Let us do it. Prepare ladders. It will only take one hour, after all. Let us lead our soldiers in an assault. King Elias does only have 80% HP, but oh my. Okay, this looks like a pretty interesting castle layout. And as a result, I am a little bit worried, I have to admit. Oh my, yes, they have a lot of incredibly good archery positions over there. Oh my, okay, come on. Let us stay calm, Elias, we must do this. For the glory of House Reformia, of course. Oh no, please don't destroy my shield before I get there. I need it. It is my friend. <laughs> okay, come on. Let's do this. We need to get... I was going to say we need to get our archers out the front here, but I don't really know whether I want to keep them out the front or whether I want to move them inside, but nevertheless, I will just keep them out the front because I have a feeling that we probably need to thin out the archery numbers on the walls here. And... Wait a minute. Did I check how many units they had before I head in here? No, I didn't. Well, I suppose it doesn't really make too much of a difference, does it? Because we are going to still do it, aren't we? Ah, that might be a mistake. Yes, it might be a grievous mistake. Oh my. Okay, we are getting shot in the back. This is not good. I really wish the AI wouldn't target the player character more than the other units on the battlefield, but it does appear as though we are going to be losing a huge amount of people here, which is absolutely awful. 
but I might actually decide just to avoid the front line altogether and just head on here. Oh, oh no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whoa, okay, this is not a good place. This is not a good place to be. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my. I really wish I had some sort of food that could rejuvenate my HP in some way. Like I could just snack on an orange or something, and it rejuvenates my HP by 20% or something to that effect. That would be impressive <laughs> and really useful. Okay, well, I don't know what to do. I am absolutely frozen solid in fear here, because we have a shield that is just about to be destroyed, and many, many archers inside. So we're going to be telling our archers to also charge in here, because I do believe we will require their assistance. And if I go down, then I will not be able to command them in the way that I would see to do so. Okay, where do we go? Where do we go? They're going up there, which is the wrong way. Is that the wrong way? It looks like the wrong way to me, because... Oh, no, maybe it's not the wrong way. Okay, thank goodness the AI knows where it's going, because I have no idea. <laughs> oh, no, that guy is attempting to snipe us here. Whoa, there's so many snipers. Okay, let's avoid them. Let's strafe while keeping our shield up. Please, no headshots. Please, no headshots. Okay, we're fine. Now just cover from here. Oh, no, we're stuck. We're stuck in a bottleneck. Oh, this is bad. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, thank goodness. Let's go. Ooh, we're making it. We're making it, guys, but we're losing a huge amount of units in the process. Oh, no. Oh, and there's the stairs. Oh, yes, we have some knights that have made it on to the battlements over there, so hopefully they'll be able to distract them long enough. Oh, no. I'm dead. Am I dead? I am going to be dead soon, but hopefully not yet. We are going to be charging them with black fire, and we will do as much damage as we can before we get taken out. We have arrows sticking in every part of us. Unfortunately enough, and we're just going to try to take out as many as we can before we die. That is the valiant way, and we will try very much so to distract these fellows while... Whoa, that was a lot of arrows. But yes, distract these fellows by the time our reinforcements come in here. Oh, I'm hoping. Oh my goodness. That was a complete and utter massacre. And not in the good way. Not in the good way. Goodness me, no wonder you told me that the layouts in the Vale are very, very good. Look at this! Look at this layout! And it doesn't help that the Vale actually has really good longbowmen as well. We are going to be retreating from that fight. That is not going to happen anytime soon. They do have actually a large amount of units, and that was a mistake. That was a very big mistake right there. However... Saying that, we managed to escape, and two of our companions leveled up. So I suppose that's not all bad. It's actually not a bad thing at all. So, we are going to be leaving there, just for now, and we are going to be rejuvenating our units. But first off, we are going to be talking to Jonas, and let's see, what do we want to give him here? He has a pretty good amount of athletics already, and what else can we give him? He has leadership. He could become a new vassal at any time. And we could also give him some weapon master. I think shield would probably be a very good idea at the moment. So I'm going to give him shield. And then we'll go over to Jasper here. No, I don't want to see your equipment. Thank you. We'll level up his strength once again. Get him some more in power strike. That will be fine, and that is it, unfortunately enough. I was hoping some more would level up, but no such luck here. So, yes, we're going to be heading into Gold Town once again. We defended it rather considerably. Now, we are out of food, which is actually not very good at all, because our morale is not too bad, but it will start to go down quite considerably. And as you see now, they are retaliating in a siege against us, which is rather unfortunate, to say the least, because we are rather low in our HP here, and I'm hoping that Brynden is going to be rejuvenated rather soon, because he is the one with the most wound treatment, as far as I am aware, so we need him mostly here. Oh my goodness. But for now, 
I am going to be ending this episode off here, and next time on A Clash of Kings, we are going to be defending Gold Town against all of these units. Oh my goodness. Whoa. How did that guy get such a large army? That is impressive. That's the guy that we defeated before, wasn't it? Oh, I know why. <laughs> oh my goodness. I might actually be changing this. As you see here, this is the reason. Campaign AI. It's on good. It's on the highest level it can be. And that is the main problem. Yes, they're able to very, very quickly rejuvenate their units and indeed their garrisons as well. So I might be turning that on to a more medium setting. Something like that, perhaps. Because we cannot use War of Attrition tactics against them. That would just be utterly useless. So maybe I will be doing that. Who knows? But yes, I will end this episode off here. I thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.